Good day everyone, I'm Truthman from Overclocking TV and we are in the analysis part of this last match, the last competition, the last match for the competition here at the OCWC Las Vegas 2017. Wow, what a match that was Stepanzi against Lucky Noob. Uh, great overclocker from the USA against an awesome overclocker from Indonesia. That was a tight battle, like very tight battle. It started a little bit weird for uh, for Lucky Noob, but uh, that's all we will be explaining in the next few minutes with Tullius and Bilzoid. Hey guys, how is it going? Hey, very Hi, well. It's going great. Awesome. So, it's um, finally done. <laughs> it is, yeah, it is. Oh, that's awesome. So, uh, Tullius, let's start with you. Uh, what did you think about that specific final match? It was that that was a proper match. I mean, that was probably that was probably the closest match of the night, I think, because both of them were just both of them were at the top of their game. Uh, even even the numbers just truly, truly say so. Very, very interesting match. I mean, just almost up to the last, last minute, you had no idea who was actually going to take it. So. I really, really, really enjoyed this match. This was the, this was proper OC. This was good fun to watch. Bilzoid? Um, I thought it was an excellent match. Uh, you know, it was very, very close. Uh, we had a trade in first place, which twice, actually. Now, no, well, three, we had yeah. trades in first place, which I don't think we've seen that much today. Um, the other matches, you know, they, they sort of... Somebody started off ahead and then they stayed ahead. And this was the first match where we really saw, you know, them catch up to each other, overtake each other. And, and then eventually the best, you know, best man won at this, uh, in, this, uh, in this matchup. And it, it, overall, it was, a, it was a great one to, to watch. Yeah, this was, this was definitely a lot of fun to watch. Um, <clears throat> both of them... Both of them started off also really, really well. I mean, uh, they had they had they had runs also in really, really early. As far as I as as far as I caught, you know, Alva was up and running inside of like six minutes. Again, just you know, this is just showing what he's really, really good at. And even uh, even Joe, I mean, he he took a couple of minutes longer, but came in really, really strong. His first opening run was extremely strong. So yeah, I. I, he, I, I guess he, he just took his time getting, you know, his system set up the way he wanted to and really, really hit strong. So a beautiful, beautiful to watch. And Alva, again, he just went at like, he just went at like a machine. His second run, his third run, fourth run, all of them, you know, he was, he was knocking off well over a second plus each run. And that in one, I mean, yeah, that is, that, that, that seriously takes some doing. So that was really, really good to see. And, uh, yeah, I mean, can't really say much apart from this match was incredible. Uh, Stepons also, he he took his time. Um, I mean, he took literally another four or five minutes before he came in with his second run. And that was, again, a whole second plus faster. So, uh, both of them at the top of the game, I think, this round. Really nice to see. Yeah, I, I really think that St Stepanzi went... The, the delay he had coming into the OS, actually, that was mostly him fine-tuning his RAM settings, which then actually really paid off for him for the rest of the match, right? Because he just had stronger scores clock for clock. He also did all of the tweaks every time, um, which, you know, yeah, it, it, it's worth it. But it's I, like the the big thing is like the the tweaks, they do save you a couple milliseconds. So if you see that your opponent's a second ahead, not really worth doing it then, right? Because yeah, yeah, you're not gonna catch up. And if you're if you're within a couple milliseconds, then it might be worth it. But Stepanzi, after you know, uh, Lucky Noob managed to overtake him for a little bit, and then Stepanzi came back, and then he just kept going. So at that point, it just sort of turned like Lucky Noob really, really needed to get his memory settings dialed in, which he tried to do. We saw him yeah. tweaking all of his memory timings, all of his sub timings, but he didn't try to do that earlier in the day. And actually, Stepanzi had uh, boot up issues earlier in the day, and it might have been because he was playing with a memory instead of actually caring about, you know, competing in that first round he was in. Because he very opened well up extremely strong, held extremely strong. Then for like the middle of the match, he, he was just sitting there and 
reboot looping for no no apparent reason. And then he came yeah. back and actually had the system stable again towards the end of the match. And then here, he again, he starts off with the system completely like it looked like he might not even be able to get into Windows. And then he gets into Windows and he just has massively higher efficiency across the board clock for Ooh. clock than Lucky Noob. And then Lucky Noob tries to, towards the end of the match, you know, he realizes, yeah, I need to catch up on that me on those memory settings, but he ca just can't do it because he's in the end of the match, right? He never, he hasn't tried to do that earlier in the day. He hasn't really maxed out the memory any time earlier. And so, well, you know, Stefanzi's strategy really paid off because he basically had the certainty, if I get into the OS with my good settings, I'm yeah. gonna win, <laughs> right? That's true. That's true. That's 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 actually very true because even at like six point three gigahertz, you know, I they were they they were close, but Stepons was faster, so he was definitely doing something something. He was definitely doing something right, and then um, even at even at uh, Alva's fastest time, which is uh, I think uh, one minute five one three one, and that I mean I think he beat at pretty much the same frequency or maybe 100 megahertz more. So efficiency was right up there. Just, yeah, yeah. you're absolutely right on. Yeah. yeah. And then Stepanzi also was actually managing to push way higher clocks towards the end. I mean, he, he was doing six, he was trying to run 6.8 towards the end, whereas Lucky Noob, I don't think he ever went over 6.5 or 6.4. So, um, yeah. I mean, yeah. Stefanzi definitely had the better memory settings, but he also did have the benefit of a much stronger CPU towards the end. So yeah, I mean, he had uh, his his run at one minute or two was I think six point six, if I'm not mistaken, or six point seven. Six, yes, six point six. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he he managed to get a higher CPU frequency out of that CPU as well as just overall stronger in pretty much everything, uh, as far as the as far as the system goes. Yeah, but I mean, there's you. Even when you look at the timings, you're honestly. I mean, sure, there's about half a second to a second's difference in terms of efficiency. But you're at the end of the day, it's just splitting hairs. It's, it could be just a couple of tiny settings in the memory, or just something like that, which could you know account for yeah. the differences we're seeing here. So, yeah, it's just or even the OS, you know, just you have yeah a good fast run. Yeah, but. All in all, very interesting match to see. Yes. So, um, um, hmm. What's going on in the chat? Not a huge lot, as far as I can no. see. Just celebrating. Yep. But yeah, many, many congratulations to Joe. I mean, yeah, he's the first winner of uh, the 2017 the first stop round. of the world tour, yeah. 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 So we will be seeing him at the finals at the end of this year, which th that'll also be very, very exciting. Very exciting, yeah. <laughs> Dan Cop say, so I help you guys out. More than welcome, bro. Would be great. Come on over. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, what else? What else? What else? What else can we can we point out about that round? It just, yeah. Uh, towards the end, again, run of the run of the middle as far as I'm concerned, because towards the end, people were having trouble with their systems. I mean, this round, Joe Joe was definitely the exception. He finished very very strong right up to the end. He was benching. You know, 6.6, 6.7. So, yeah. But, I mean, Ava, again, uh, whatever whatever issues he was he was having, he carried on having, you know, past the eight-minute mark. His last one was, like, 22 minutes down. And then for the next eight minutes, he was just having issues getting into the OS and getting, like, a run out. Yep. Towards the end, yeah, he did, he did manage to get in and get a run out. But, yeah, a little bit, little bit too little too late, unfortunately. Um, I think we've lost we audio again. Oh, you're back. Yeah. I'm getting used to it. With my eye on you, <laughs> Skype. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I actually agree with Dan Kapoor. What he's saying. I mean, clock by clock, Joe did have much, much, much better efficiency. So he, he, he yeah. says, yeah, there's absolutely no, no denying that. Yeah, well, he seemed to have much better memory settings just across the board. True. So that's that's also very true. Otherwise, yeah. Be, yeah. And we pretty much covered that, though. <laughs> Yeah, the tweaks, the the memory. Um, yeah, <laughs> um, you know we could. Hmm. Uh, well, the next is the award sum, award sum yeah. ceremony. Yeah. So that that's what we're waiting for right now. We've kind of run out of things to talk about. <laughs> so. <laughs> If the chat would kindly contribute by, you know, asking questions and not just um, moaning at us <laughs> about how we. <laughs> um, so, so what did you think about the whole, um, um, the whole event as 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 such? I think, I think, I think, I think it was interesting. I unfortunately didn't get to catch it earlier today. Like I didn't watch the qualifiers or anything, so I kind of came in not knowing what to expect. Which True, I caught it I, on I and off. Is, what? I yeah, caught it, it on and off, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I again, their setups are getting better with every every event. I was seriously jealous with the whole swimming pool. Like, dude. <laughs> I don't know if you saw Trough's uh, video uh, where they were showing off the place. They oh, actually yeah. had a freaking swimming yeah, pool the, the, outside the balcony. <laughs> yeah, the venue... The venue is gorgeous, and it's not even so much a venue; it's a it's a really high end hotel room. So yeah, yeah, it, it it's it's an incredible event for for the first world tour stop, and yeah, um, yeah. The so somebody on the uh, chat asked what boards they were using. Uh, everybody was using the Z two seventy X gaming SOC motherboard SOC. from Gigabyte. So, yeah, and that but motherboard pretty much doesn't exist right now. Like, you can't find yeah, it on the Gigabyte website. Uh, this has pretty much been the first time it's been seen in public. And it had, had a pretty strong showing, you know. I mean, the, the memory, unfortunately, um, was more of a uh, value-oriented kit at 2133 15 15 15 uh so, you know stocks actually that's literally the only settings they come at they don't have a they don't have an xmp profile or any either yeah. other high higher uh performance settings on them so you know um but in terms of cpu clocks the motherboard didn't really you know it, it showed that it, it's very capable as far as cpu clocks go yeah. it handled the load of ln2 just fine we didn't see any major issues for anybody um oh. yeah it'd just be really really interesting to know what 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 ICs there were actually on those dims this is just, who knows just, <laughs> yeah it's just, just like just curiosity yeah I, I i think that's actually kind of sad in the in the in sort of the oc community there's a lot of the like the lower end ICs nobody really talks about them like you have the b die you have the e die and you have d die that yeah and that's it. That's oh, it. and then the Hynix MFR and AFR. MFR and, and then, AFR, yeah. And and nothing else apparently exists. No, no other C makers. <laughs> and then it's like, you know, and, and I guess it sort of makes sense. But for me, it's always been more interesting to take lower end memory kits and clock them up than buy really high clock memory kits, where sometimes the motherboard won't eat them even. Um. Yeah, we've lost audio again. Really sorry, guys. Skype, 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 Skype. Why do you keep doing this? Can you hear me? Yep. Anybody? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I've always been more interested in, like, budget memory kits and taking those and clocking those up because generally, like, uh, like there's a lot of motherboards where you, the high frequency stuff just won't work, and also True. your CPU often won't like the high frequency stuff because it puts extra load on the memory controller. So, 
Now, I, I, like, I prefer to buy something a little bit more low-end and then clock it up and see how far it can go than, than, yeah. than just bin B-die or bin E-die or bin whatever. The end result is I have terrible CPU efficiency everywhere because I just <laughs> don't have any fast RAM. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I've, I've actually had pretty good luck with Theme Extreme in the past, you know, in DDR2, DDR3 days. I've come across some real gems from them, so... Just, I mean, Team Group abs- has a really nice uh, eDie kits as well yeah, right now yeah, yeah. that are yeah, yeah. Uh, available. It's just like, you know, you have your high performance kits from each brand and you have your, you know, I need RAM that, that works kits from each brand. Yeah. Yeah. So, and even then, 2133 doing 3466 is actually Not pretty bad impressive. Yeah, it is pretty yeah, impressive. Yeah, because actually. I remember there are other kits which might be rated for like 2400. And they won't go a lick above 2400. Very true. Because Very true. they lose stability. They don't scale with voltage. They, they have terrible motherboard support as well. That, that's another yeah. thing. It's just on some yeah. motherboards, you stick a kit of RAM in. It's just hell. Yeah. It's yeah. Com- completely a complete disaster. So, actually, a pretty strong showing from a you know, value oriented memory kit. Yeah. Um, I don't think- yeah. yeah. Um, So, Dan Cop's, Dan Cop's going to go to bed. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, well, 1080 Ti. Um, yeah, we've lost audio again. <laughs> uh, I'm back. Yep. Mostly. Okay, I can still hear you. You know, the funny thing is, even my mouse starts dropping out now. Aye, aye, aye. Right. Okay. <laughs> Skype is literally destroying my PC. <laughs> okay. So, everything. So, so, somebody just commented Skype hates me um i think all software hates me <laughs> the number of times i just have obscure software issues is just ridiculous that's why i don't do better software tweaks i try to tweak something it stops working <laughs> or it scores worse <laughs> um yeah so yeah, so about the 1080 Ti, um, Nvidia didn't announce it, but I can tell you exactly what it's going to be. It's going to be a Titan XP with less cores, because that's never happened before. <laughs> and a little bit less RAM, and, and and a little bit less RAM. I actually wonder about that because there's not actually a smaller GDDR5 XIC. Yeah, that's actually true. So so I they'd have gonna... to cut down the memory bus with. With, with the RAM, because yeah. if they want to go yeah. under 12 gigs, they have to cut have to off cut. memory uh, connections because they can't get a smaller IC to use. So That's that, very true. That, that, that might actually lead to the 1080 Ti being significant, like more behind a Titan XP than we've seen in the past, where like the 980 Ti yeah. and the Titan yeah. X, they were pretty much on top of each other. And, and then you have the Titan XP, and if the 1080 Ti loses a few, you know, uh, bits on the memory controller, you know that that would actually eat into a per, into the performance more than just losing a couple cores. That's true. So. That's actually true. Yeah. In fact, that I'd actually half expect that to happen. Yeah. So somebody's commenting that they won't have to sell their kidney for a 1080 Ti. Did the, didn't the t- Titan XP get the price hike? Went from like a thousand bucks to a thousand two hundred. Two hundred. Yep. So what was the 980 Ti plus two hundred? There's your new price. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I don't think they'd go that far. Yeah, but, but I think 800, eight hundred, maybe eight ninety nine, even maybe. Yeah, who it, knows? I, I, it could end up very, very expensive at this point. Yeah. I mean, you know, I don't care because I don't buy Nvidia or GPUs anyway. <laughs> but you know, yeah, you couldn't even like, buy the Titan XPs in India if you tried. Well, they don't right because they don't actually sell it through any partners. Yeah, they don't. Yeah, 
So, so, and and Nvidia themselves don't ship to India, do they? No, no. You, 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 like I actually asked for for them directly to Nvidia India, and they said no. So, oh, well, that that <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I actually needed, needed them for clients. Strangely enough, I mean, uh, yeah. So, still couldn't buy them. Well, so oh, well. what do you do? Do you like get them from China or something? Um, or? no, I actually landed up getting them in from the states. Ah. That that's just horrific. <laughs> it, it is. It is. It is. I mean, I wasn't the one paying those bills. So. And then the thing oh. is, like, then the Titan XP on LN2 and all the BIOSes are just so locked down, and it's you can't change the power limit, you can't change the voltage, you can't change this, you can't bypass bypass the power circuit. There's more safety features on it than like <laughs> a high security prison. <laughs> oh boy! Yeah, really, no. really, really. Now. Uh, Third-party cards always better. I mean, I honestly, it would be awesome if they actually let the Titan XP fly, like, like you know, let Asus, MSI, Gigabyte, all of them just do their own versions, and like. Yeah, I, I don't it, even get why Nvidia stops them though. It's like. Yeah, I really don't get that. I really, really don't I, get that. You let them do everything else, just not this. Like, I mean, they could maybe force the AIBs to price the Titan XP even higher. Like, you yeah. know. Instead of twelve hundred, it would cost fifteen hundred in the Asus flavor, and Nvidia would still be like, "Yeah, we have the cheapest one," or something. But I have <laughs> no idea how 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 that works. But oh well. Um, so somebody on the chat asked, "What's your advice to start overclocking?" Google. Yeah. Google how to oh. overclock. <laughs> there's forums. There's Forum. there's sites. Yeah. Um, but I started with Google because like yeah. I didn't know any forums. So the first thing I did, go to Google. How to overclock, and I think I actually learned all of my over like my my first overclock. I think I learned that off of the rog.asus.com, so the rog sort of blog site thing, because they actually have like pretty good overclocking guides on there. Right. Yeah. So I just use yeah. those, especially because I had an rog motherboard at the time when I first started out. So. Yeah. Yeah, um, I know that's true. Uh, for me, it was I think 08, 07, uh Extreme Systems. That's that's yeah i that's joined i joined the oc scene really like recently relatively speaking like 2012 that's like when i seriously started doing overclocking um on on air well water cooling at the time uh right. with an aio right. so yeah extreme systems uh there's plenty of forums there's 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 a button of forums out there is this is yeah i mean you have oh, you yeah. have the hw bot forums the ACS yeah. ACS forums there's overclock.net yeah. uh this is just like there's so many forums yeah so that, that's probably the that's one of the best places to go um yeah just read basically yeah. Yeah, you just got to do a lot of reading. It's gonna be, yeah, it's going to be your gear at the end of the day, so you don't want to land up killing it, you know. So read, read before you jump in. But do jump in. It's fun. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So. How did you start? Yeah, that's, I think it just. You just covered yeah, that. Yeah, we pretty much uh, yeah. just covered that. I started in 2012 on X79. That hard platform. Nice platform. Expensive. Yeah, yeah, I actually like X X79 a lot better than say X99, just because it I had a lot work. of fun with. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Just, it, it, it did just strong boards, just really strong. Yeah, boards. Much, much stronger motherboards and yeah. just overall like better. Like it just feels more mature. X ninety nine just seems like sort of prototypey, because it mm -hmm. is the first implementation of DDR four from Intel, and it's well, the memory support is, in my opinion, the the worst part of X ninety nine. It is just like the memory is all over the place, yeah. especially with some of the boards. It's like you try to boot up certain settings, and it just drops memory channels on you. You know, it doesn't crash. It just doesn't load up half your RAM, and you get to the OS, and you're Ooh. like. Thank you. Wait Thank you for wasting 20 <laughs> seconds of my life booting up Windows with half the RAM missing. Um, well, what, you know, it's like 20 seconds once, but once you boot up the system t 100 times in one session and you keep losing that RAM, it just gets to the point where I'm just not going to boot you. <laughs> yeah, true, true, true. 
here's I, I, this. I just give up. <laughs> Screw this. Correct. You know, in the old school days, you used to get this error when, I, or at least a warning, your BIOS would tell you memory size decrease. Like when you'd unplug like a stick of your RAM when you had like four, four sticks and you unplug one and then. Yeah, no, X99 yeah. just boots and then you get to the OS. Yeah. The, the worst <laughs> yeah. part is, the worst thing I've seen was I boot all the way into the OS. And uh, CPU Z reports that I have quad channel support. Yeah. Right. And it says I have 16 gigs of RAM. And then you check Task Manager, and there's four gigs of RAM. <laughs> when even the freaking utilities can't pick up on the error, that's when you just want to throw a book at the computer. That... <laughs> it's just like, die! <laughs> I'm loving the chat right now. Welcome. Yeah, I bet. I, I, yeah, everybody's had quite a few horror stories with. Yeah, we Music already have people on the chat having <laughs> flashbacks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm gonna stop. We're sorry. You know, th sorry. this. You know, this is why I stick to GPUs because with GPUs things either work or they don't work, and this works. So, <laughs> my first e-power build. That so, looks sick, by the way. Yeah, that that's actually why I didn't catch today's uh today's qual uh qualifier rounds because I was working on that. I also uh, discovered what uh that I smell like burnt chicken. <laughs> 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 because, yeah, you know, working with the, you know, because solder, like, you can tell, like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's something eight, to take That's eight, eight WG yeah. uh, wire, so it's, it's massive. And then you're trying to solder into the ground plane and the V-core planes of a PCB, which are just massive heat sinks. Yeah. So you need to use like the like I'm basically using Stupidly a soldering hard irons. Yeah. Yeah, massive 150 watt soldering iron that we've lost audio again. Oh back. Yeah. And of yeah. course I burnt myself. And the sound oh, there we go, sounds back. Partly. Yep. Back. Uh, okay. Yeah, no, my speakers dropped out. Not not oh. the mic. <laughs> Just part of it. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, everything died? No. Yeah, no, so that's why I, I, I prefer sticking to GPU stuff because the, the GPU side of things is a little bit more interesting and a little bit more hardware uh, involved. Like, like, you have Vault mods, and, BIOS mods, yeah. and it's a little bit more complicated than than uh, CPU side of things because these days True. on the CPU side, everything does itself for you. Yeah, yeah, no, I totally understand that. And this is a, this is definitely a lot, uh, lot more hands-on as well. Um, yeah. I mean, like, but then you add LN2 onto the GPUs and it just becomes <laughs> a whole different ballgame. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, so 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 basically I'm like, I like LN2 on the CPU because that makes CPU overclocking less boring. But LN2 on the GPU is just like shooting yourself in the foot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. Really? Really. really, really difficult. And, and with the pots and just getting the mounting right and then the GPU power consumption is just ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely true. I mean, uh, I was I I was benching the 980 Ti with Hassan recently here when he was here, and oh boy, oh boy, my 1300 wouldn't keep up with with like the 10 core and the 980 Ti. It, I was triggering OCP on my 1300. So yeah, those 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 things can get seriously demanding in a hurry. Yeah, I actually managed to trip OCP on a. Uh... The, I have a 1600 watt EVGA power supply here. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Two. I tripped OCP on that uh, with three Fury X's <laughs> on water. <laughs> Not even LN2, just three Fury uh, X's water cooling tripping OCP all over the place because um, the, the, the cards just like GPUs just chug power. Chug power. Yeah, they, yeah. they really. And, and, and it's like everybody's like, oh yeah, 14 nanometer, it's better. Uh, well, I guess on NVIDIA's side, it is better because you can't remove the power limit. But on the <laughs> AMD side, <laughs> on the AMD side, you know, you have the RX 480, which is a 150 watt GPU. Then you unlock the power limit and it'll happily pull 300 or 400 or 500. It, it, it'll just pull as much as you give it and it'll just keep going and going and going. So I, I'm actually super excited for, for Vega from AMD. Yeah, me too. Me too. Because HBM2... 14 nanometer glow flow process. It's supposed to be a bit refined, but the cool thing about glow flow 14 nanometer is, is really good with cold. 
Like it scales. Yeah. It scales with voltage. Yeah. It scales with temperatures. Uh, it doesn't really complain about much. It, you can get cards with no uh, no cold bug. I have one here, which I ran at like minus. So I'm actually, not, I think it was like minus 170 and it just ran wow. just fine or minus 180 because I was, uh, I have the Raptor 4 uh, LN2 pod. So it has that little extension thing, which you yeah. absolutely, yeah. which on PCBs like. The audio is going again. We're having audio problems. Found it. Caught it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This time the mic dropped out without the speakers, and usually they I, both drop out, so I'm, I'm starting to lose track. Um, somebody asked, are manufacturers hiding the power of their products by underclocking? No. Okay. So what ships... They're pushing as hard as they can. What, what you get when it ships to you, it's not the absolute peak performance. It's where the power draw isn't stupid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean... The thing I, is, like... The thing is, it's like, as you start overclocking, right, for, say, on GPUs, to get, like, 20% per, uh, on, say, AMD side, because I do AMD more than NVIDIA. I have no idea, actually, about any NVIDIA anything. So on the AMD side, if you want, like, past about the 15% mark, pushing past that area, you start very quickly going from, you know, slight increases in power draw to very easily ending up with a GPU that pulls twice as much power, yeah. Puts out maybe 15%, 20% more FPS. It's like... Why? It's yeah. not like... I, I don't I don't mind doing that. I have I had daily rigs that ran 500 watts on the GPU. And I was just like, yeah, it's my daily rig. Sounds like a jet engine, but... Eh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but, but they get... But they if, get if they ship hungry. that, you know, if they ship that just as is that that would just get ridiculous like you know yeah that would that would, it would, it would, it would the, it, your entire performance to power ratio would just be so badly skewed that it just yeah it wouldn't it wouldn't make sense and and that's that does happen even with the 90 ti uh i i remember uh last last when i was in taiwan people were saying that a single card is capable of pulling close to 900 watts plus now that's quite a significant load, even for you but know, like that's for, on that's yeah. on LN2. That's on LN2. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's actually really interesting about the Nvidia versus like AMD is like from what I heard on LN2, the Nvidia cards just blow out the you know they blow out the power limit ridiculously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they do. From what I've heard about AMD cards, well, they don't really scale that far, so they sort of like especially the Fury X, for example. What I heard was that it pretty much stops at 450. Like you get 450 watts power draw on water. You get 450 watts power draw on LN2 because past that it doesn't really scale. Right, so, right. And and it's like 300 watts on water, 300 watts on LN2, and I lost audio. No, it's back. Again, yay Skype. No, it's back. It's back. It's back. So yeah, ba well, no, the mic works. My headphones don't oh, work. <laughs> I couldn't hear you. So, so yeah, the reason why ship do stuff doesn't ship overclocked is because it just wouldn't make any, yeah, power-wise, power, power -wise, it just wouldn't make any sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, with CPUs, I guess Intel could get away with shipping 5 gigahertz on, like, KB-like. Definitely on KB, like, they could get away with shipping 5. Totally, but it's exactly, like they just wouldn't do it in the power and look the targeting. Yeah, they wouldn't do 91 watts. There's no way. Exactly. It, it, it's like 160, I think, for yeah. 5 gigahertz. So. Welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, thank you guys for the uh, for the show, for the analysis, and all the details and asking the answering the question of the people on the live chat. Uh, this was Buildzoid and Tulius. These two guys are awesome. Go check them out at Buildzoid and at Tulius. Uh, you can you guys can post your link into the live chat as well. So people can just uh, follow it. So we're going to be back in the next few seconds for the award ceremony here at the OCWC Las Vegas 2017.